Hi, my name is Emma and let's talk spooky stuff. <laughs> Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. I am very excited about today's video. A while back I asked you if you'd like me to do a video on Gaspar Noé's films and today I am delivering and I'm also taking it a step further and I'm going to rank them from my favorite to my least favorite. I'm very excited about this video and if you do enjoy this kind of content please give it a thumbs up because it lets me know to keep going and I'm going to make this into possibly a series where I talk about different directors that have more disturbing dark films and ranking each of their films and doing exactly what I'm going to do today. So without further ado, we're going to jump in again. Make sure to like it if you like it and also make sure to subscribe if you haven't. We're almost at 80k. And let's get started. Gaspar Noé is known for his controversial approach to cinema, utilizing extended, uncomfortable, continuous shots, strobing lights, low frequency sounds, and mind bending stories. This has given his work a point of difference and a distinctive style. Noé's approach to cinema has stricken fear, terror, and even disgust in audience goers around the world. Gaspar Noé is the son of Argentinian artist Luis Felipe Noé, who greatly inspired the Neo figuration art movement. And from the looks of it, he also inspired the cinematography in Enter the Void. I'm not sure if you can see the similarities, but I definitely can. Gaspar Noé was born in Argentina, and at around the age of seven, his life changed when he watched 2001 A Space Odyssey for the first time. He claims it was a hallucinogenic experience and an artistic turning point. He also says without Space Odyssey, he would never have become a director, and he often nods to the film in his own work. He claims to have seen it over 50 times. Noé is now based in Paris, France, which is why his films have such a strong association with the new French extremity movement. I think at least one of his films make it on all of the most disturbing film lists I've read. And not only because of his subject matter, but because of his unique approach to assaulting the audience both physically and psychologically with his trademark cinematography. All of his films have the same voyeuristic approach to following a character through a personal tragedy or tragedies in their life and showing how it affects those around them. Noé has a love of documentary films and learning from film and this is a perspective he puts in his films giving us a concentrated context on the character's unique situation. And usually he only breaks these intense sequences with startling titles and strobing which aims to disrupt the audience keeping them on their toes. Personally I'm a huge fan of his work if you couldn't tell by now. I actually put off this video for so long because I just didn't know how to do him justice. I think his ability to push his films over the edge and provoke such an extreme reaction in his audience is something that is super inspiring. I love that his films deal with the intricate and major flaws of human life and relationships, holding a mirror to the ugliness of society or in his case a strobe light. <laughs> but I did want to throw out there that today I am going to be ranking his five feature films. I'm not going to be talking about his short films or his his music videos and I've also chose not to put his medium film into the mix which is Lux Aterna. I know I definitely pronounced that wrong uh, but I do want to mention it because it's quite fascinating before we get into the ranking. The film is known as a metafictional drama thriller and it has the runtime of 51 minutes making it what is referred to as a medium film running just over the time of what is considered a featurette. The film is about two actresses who play themselves making a film about witches. The movie is experimental in nature like most of his other works and utilizes split screen to tell the story about this chaotic film shoot. I think that this film has maybe the longest continuous strobing light scene in film running over 10 minutes without cutting away. It's said that the paramedics were waiting outside at the premiere at Cannes just in case anyone fainted. But the film is aimed towards the industry itself. In his words, it's a modest essay about the beliefs and art of filmmaking. It's worth a watch if you're interested in mockumentary style films about the filmmaking process with intense stylization. But let's get to the meat and let's start with my least favorite Gaspar Noé film 
and that is I Stand Alone. This also happens to be his first feature. The film is incredibly effective, which is probably what makes it my least favorite. It's so close to some people's grim reality, it's hard to stomach. I'm always shocked that Irreversible is constantly referred to as his most controversial movie, because I Stand Alone is one of the darkest slices of life ever recorded on film. The film is an extension of his short film Carney from 1991. In the film we follow a character referred to as the Butcher. The film is based around the voiceover narration which is his inner dialogue, his dark inner dialogue, as we watch his life break down. After an incident lands him in jail, he moves to a new area in hopes to turn his life around, but his bad luck follows him and he becomes bitter and desperate. The whole film is about a man with an extremely bleak existence and outlook and how he blames the world around him, hence the title I Stand Alone. The film deals with extremely disturbing and taboo themes that I cannot repeat here on YouTube. The first person narration for the film was written by Noé when he was mostly drunk because he wanted to be as close as possible to the mindset of the main character. It's a depressing film that is equal parts disturbing and dreary. Irreversible gets my number four spot and again I don't dislike this film, I actually think it is a modern masterpiece. The film is known for a prolonged essay scene which is extremely brutal and disturbing. In Irreversible we follow two men in reverse chronology who seek revenge after one of their girlfriends is attacked. The genius of the film is it starts with the chaos and violence and slowly winds its way backwards into the placid final shot, revealing its cards along the way and providing answers for its brutality. It's a tragedy that ends in uncomfortable peace because of its non-linear storytelling, with the audience helplessly knowing what's to come. The film is about how humans are powerless to time changing everything and how an act in time cannot be undone. But it has many themes and undertones. It's a complex film about human nature and how fragile we are. Most of the dialogue in the film was improvised by the actors. Adding to this, the lead couple were married at the time. It was raw, vulnerable and challenging. Irreversible is known to be one of the most controversial films of all time because of its portrayal of violence. But that's not all. The film is also infamous for its use of low frequency background noise during the first half hour of the film. The noise is said to produce nausea in humans, so Gaspar was intending for the reaction he received. And boy was it a reaction. The film was allegedly the most walked out of film that year. I'm not sure how they measure that. And allegedly people fainted in its premiere at the Cannes Film Festival. Okay, my number three, my third favorite Gaspar Noé film is Climax. And like I said, this is a personal list and I'm sure my personal ranking of his films is probably just as divisive as his films themselves. And Climax is no different. The genre bending film is a mix of drama, music and horror. Taking place in the 90s, the film follows 20 French urban dancers who have been isolated rehearsing in a remote location for the last three days. But on the final night, they decide to have a party to toast to their efforts. Unfortunately, someone has spiked the sangria and what was meant to be a celebration soon turns into a nightmare as the trip turns sinister. The film in true Noé fashion is made up of continuous roaming shots and highly improvised by the cast, who are made up of mostly professional dancers with no acting experience. This is apart from the lead Sofia Butella, who had one of the most challenging roles. Stylization was key in this story about drug abuse. The film uses a 42 minute long take, which is alarming to watch. The camera mimics the loss of control in many scenes, which is uncomfortable for the viewer, along with jarring titles that appear in the film throwing out any temples. End credits appear two minutes into the film, main credits 45 minutes, and the title is revealed at the very end. Noé has said that the film is about many things, a safe place turning into a madhouse, and also, interesting enough, the idea of casual alcoholism. Although the film is about LSD, it's meant to mimic the behavior of people on alcohol and how, quote, cruel humans can be. And cruel indeed, in classic Noé style, this film has some extremely distressing scenes. Okay, only two left. I think you're gonna be surprised. My second favorite is Enter the Void. It's hard to talk about this film without addressing the minor spoiler of what the film is about as it's a key part of the protagonist's journey. So skip forward to the time on the screen if you'd like to skip over those details 
details completely. It is on most blurbs about the film. Enter the Void is labeled as a drama fantasy and it's perhaps the most suited to Noe's use of cranes and fly-through prolonged shots. Because in this film we follow the tragic story of an American man living in Tokyo whose sister has come to live with him but, and here's the spoiler, he is betrayed by his friend and killed. What follows is his trip after his soul leaves his body, which is referenced in earlier scenes when the characters are talking about what happens when you die and the Book of the Dead. The film is an odyssey of paranoia and heartbreak, and much like his first film, I Stand Alone, the film also features the main character's first person narration voiceover. But this film takes it one step further and it's also shot as a POV of the main character. Japan makes for an interesting background as the neon lights take over as we take a psychedelic trip into the afterlife, reflecting on what has been and what's to come. Like all of Noe's films, the movie bends time and of course has an emphasis on the dark side of humanity. The film received a 15 minute standing ovation at Cannes. Here we are at my favorite film by Gaspar and this is the film that inspired this whole video. It's a film that I never heard talked about. I never even knew about the controversy so that's going to be fun to get into. Uh, but this film just blew me away from the start to the end. Another complete masterpiece that I believe everyone should watch if you can stomach it. But it's not as intense as the other ones with its disturbing factor. It's just very adult. <laughs> and interesting enough, the film is actually ranked the lowest on IMDb. So this is probably a controversial ranking, but my favorite Gaspar Noé film of all time is love. Interesting enough, the idea of love was what Irreversible intended to be, and look into a couple's connection and complete breakdown. But when Irreversible turned into a tale of revenge on brutality, Gaspar shelved the idea and later he made love. The film is about an American couple living in Paris who bring a third person into their relationship, unaware of the ripple effect it will cause on their own life. And yes, I'll say it, the film is made up of many adult scenes and you know how Noé does it, he doesn't like to cut away. So there are prolonged scenes and not only that, it was shot in 3D. And if you read between the lines, I can't say anything more about that on YouTube, but you might want to look up. There was a particular scene in 3D during one of these adult scenes that uh, was a lot. <laughs> Once again, this film caused a stir because of the controversial themes without any context of why it was done. He wanted to make a film about love from a sexual point of view. And because of the nature of the production, he didn't want to use any adult workers in the industry because he wanted the process to be raw and unmanufactured. The scenes were mostly improvised and unsimulated. But the film is about much more than that because it tells one of the most romantic stories about falling in love before flipping it on its head to show the reality. It's a heartbreaking journey that really locks you in and holds you hostage, letting you fall in love with the characters and then leaving you heartbroken when they're revealed for who they really are. Messy, complicated humans. It's a mind-bending, emotional ride which was intended as Noé said he wanted to make an extremely sexual film with real emotional sex. And like Irreversible, the film is about these intense ripple effects of people's consequences for their actions that are irreversible. If you haven't seen it, obviously I highly recommend it. I was floored by it and no, I did not watch the 3D version. I have so many more thoughts on Noé's body of work and why he chooses to fixate on certain topics and how it's become his brand. The layering, the metaphors, the nature of his films, I just love them. If you haven't seen the linking themes, I'm sure you have within this video just yet. I do wanna read you a quote that I think is really important to understand him as an artist. It was from an interview he did with filmschoolrejects.com. The quote really provides an insight into the motivations behind his work and how sometimes it's seen as shock value, but he's trying to dissect the human experience Experience, and it also explains his obsession with strobing. When my mother died in my arms, it was one of the sweetest moments of my life. To see her lying in my arms, it was like the past, present, and future were all linked. It was a very visceral moment. It was a scene we were experiencing.
expecting. She was in total mental care. She had epilepsy without seizures. Her brain was burning and she was in a permanent state of terror, much more than any character in my movies. She was afraid of everything. It was far scarier when she left to see the face slowly calm. My father drinks a lot and I never expected she would die before him. His life keeps going. Your body starts to malfunction. It's just gonna happen one day, sooner or later. His obsession with the idea of death, tragedy, birth, and time all come back to this quote. He's also talked about remembering the day his mother explained to him what a fetus was and how he came into this world and how that had one of the most profound effects on his life. Gaspar Noé's work is stunning, shocking, mind-bending, and above all, it's thoughtful. It's a layered and complex look at our existence. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up up and I'll talk to you all very soon. Stay spooky. Bye.